In this video, we're going to take a look at Visual Composer's image gallery option. We're going to take a look at the functions it gives us, how we can use it, the different types of galleries we can work with, and the different settings that are available to us in this building block component. We're going to take this previously laid out design and we're going to add in the image gallery. We've got a simple layout, we've got two rows. The first one is currently empty, the second one has a text block in it with some text and an image floating over to the right hand side. So the first thing we need to do is add in the image gallery component. We do that simply by clicking on the plus arrow and choosing the image gallery option from the add element window that pops up. Now the image gallery gives us a range of different options, some that we've seen before, some we've covered before, but also a range of different gallery types we can work with and how we actually interact with those image galleries. So the first thing we've got available to us is the widget title, which, as I've said previously, just puts the title above this particular building block element on our page layouts. And as I said before, I generally tend to stay away from these and use the text block because that gives us more control over the styling of the text without having to play about with the style sheets. Second option we've got available to us is the gallery style. And if I expand that, you can see we've got four different types. We've got flex slider with fade, flex slider slide, nevo slider, or an image grid. Below that, we've got auto rotate slides. We've got the image where we can actually add in all our images. We've got the image size, should we want to control that? And we've got what happens depending upon the type of gallery that we use when we click on an image. So you'll tend to find that this will change depending upon what gallery type you're working with. And finally, we've got the extra class option, which as I've said before, just simply covers us, covers us if we want to deal with controlling any of these building block elements through external styles that we set up and design ourselves. It's a bit of an advanced topic and not something we're going to touch upon too much with, uh, with these videos. So let's take a look at how we start working with inserting our galleries and the different types of galleries and how they affect the way our images are displayed. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the flex slider fade We'll add some images and we'll set some of the parameters for this and then switch over to the front end of the website so you can see exactly what this will look like on the page. So the first thing we need to do is add some images. So we'll click on the plus to add images. And what I'm gonna do is just quickly upload a couple of images so we've got some similarly sized images to play with. And we'll just upload those to our WordPress installation, ready to start working. As I always say, most important thing you can do when you're adding images to a live website is ensure that you've got a minimum of some alt text for each of the images. It's particularly important for people that don't use images switched on their website or screen readers and things like that, but it's also good for search engines and it's just good practice. Obviously, we're just working with a demonstration site, so I'm not going to worry too much about that, but it's just something to bear in mind when you are creating your image galleries and uploading image files to your website. So as you can see, what's happened is we've got these four images are now ticked. So that's saying that these four images are going to be added into our image gallery. We can easily get rid of that by simply clicking on the checkbox up in the top corner, which will change to a minus sign to say we don't want that one in our gallery, and we can add it back in just simply by clicking on it. So these four images are now going to be used, and we'll just say add images. And what that'll do is that'll show us a thumbnail view of each of the four images, which we can easily reorder by simply dragging the image we want and placing it into position where we want it. So we can easily reorder these. We can also add more images if we want to, simply by clicking on the plus, and adding extra images in there. And on the flip side, if we want to get rid of any of these, we can simply hit the red X in the top right hand corner to get rid of them. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just put an image size in there, and I'm going to work with the same size as our previous one was, which was 640 by 322. It might not work out perfectly, and we can come back in and change that. Second thing we've got is how we want the images to show up should they be clicked upon. So we could say that we want to use on print, open on pretty photo, which will open up a sort of light box effect. We could say do nothing, or we could say open a custom link. And depending upon which one we, we choose, different things will appear. So you can see that if we choose open a custom link, we can put the links below. What you'd have to do with this is ensure that if you do want to click on them to open up a different page or to go somewhere else or just open up a custom link, that you insert the link for each of these particular images one line at a time. So input your link, press the enter, put your second one in, your third one, and so on until you've completed all your images. I'm going to say that I wanted to do nothing. 
and we're not going to worry with the extra class name. So we're going to leave it at that. We've got some basic information in there. We've got a couple of slides in there and we're, we're good to go. Let's try it see what it looks like. So we'll save the changes. As you can see, that's now put in the image gallery in our first row. So I'll hit the update on the website and then we'll switch over to the front end and take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so we're on the front end of our website and as you can see, our images are showing up. We've got some arrows to the left and right hand side so we can manually scroll through and if we click, nothing happens. So we've got the basic parameters all set up and we can see how quick and easy this is to work with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch back and we're going to take a look at making some changes to this and see how it affects the layout and the way that we display our images. So let's just switch back over to the admin and take a look at how we can change this. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I want to change. First thing I want to change is the size of this because the images weren't scaling the way I wanted. So I'm going to adjust that to 640 by 480. And we're going to change this over to the flex slider slide. And we're going to say that we want to open pretty photo on click. So we changed a couple of the parameters, changed the different to a different gallery type. We've changed the fact the image size and we've changed the effect that if we click on the image that we see on the slider, how it's going to be interacted with. So let's save that, update our page, and then switch back over to the website and take a look at how this looks on the screen now. So I've refreshed my page, and as you can see, the images are now showing up slightly larger. And you should also notice that if we take our mouse over any of these images, it now changes to the point hand so I can click. And you can see I now get the full version of that image open up in the pretty window effect or the pretty photo effect. We've also got the thumbnail option so we can scroll through to see the other ones so we don't have to switch back out of this, go back to the slider and make those changes again. So let's close that down and let's switch back to the admin site and make a couple more changes. So we're back in the admin. Let's click and edit and let's choose a different type of slider. Let's just say we want the Nevo slider this time. And let's change this now to slightly longer and we're going to say we want to do nothing again. So we'll save the changes, update, switch back over to the main website, and all we need to do is refresh this page to see the effect that's made. So now we're using the Nevo slider, slightly different look, slightly different layout, with some nice little transition effects, and if we take our mouse off and leave it, we should find it now takes 10 seconds before it'll transition to the next slide in the gallery. So we can slow it down, we get more control over how we want the images to sort of be displayed. And if you're wondering why my text below isn't actually showing up, it's because we applied an animation effect to it. So we've actually got to make it into focus and you see it'll animate in from the right hand side. And finally, let's just jump back into the admin and let's take a look, make it one more alteration and we'll change it from being a slider this time and take it over to the image grid. Now what this is going to do, is going to create more of a traditional kind of thumbnail image gallery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the image size out from this and just delete it. And we're going to say that on click, we want it to open pretty photo. So what this is going to do now, because I'm not giving it an image size, it's going to create square thumbnails for us. And when we click it, it'll open up the larger version, kind of more traditional way of seeing multiple images where you can pick and choose what you want to look at. So let's just save that update the page, switch back over to the front end and take a look at the difference that that's made to the way that the gallery is going to be displayed. So we'll refresh the page and there's our gallery. So we've got thumbnails which now become clickable to open up the larger version in the pretty photo effect. So this is a great way if you've got multiple images, 20, 30, 40 images that you want to display on a page without becoming overwhelming or having to wait people to sort of scroll through your slider one at a time. You could do it this way and you can have quite a comprehensive gallery all laid out and let the user interact with it with a simple click of a mouse. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with all the new videos that are being released. And until next time, take care.